Our next section for chapter three is 3.10, and it's the derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions. Um, so we have our six inverse trigonometric functions and their derivatives. They are on your cheat sheet. The ones that I see that are used the most often are going to be the sine and cosine. Inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, and inverse secant. What I want to point out here is that if you are into memorizing them, and these are not any that are memorized for your benchmark test, if you know the left-hand column, the inverse sine, inverse tangent, inverse secant, the derivatives of their co-functions are the same as the derivative of the function with a minus sign put out in front. Okay, um, because we're taking x's in radians. Okay, I got to put a big point here. Radians are required in calculus. Because we're doing x's in radians, we come back and get an angle. Um, so we ask ourselves, what can I put in for inputs of x here? And that would be numbers between negative 1 and 1. Remember, your sine and cosine graphs bounce between negative 1 and 1. For your tangent and cotangent graphs, if you look up on the wall, the third graph from the left, you'll see that the inverse tangent. So. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at the range of the original sine function to get the domain of the inverse sine. So I'm going to look at the range of the tangent graph. That range is from negative infinity to infinity. And for the secant and cosecants, um, I'm going to just draw the sine and cosine really quick. If that was a sine or a cosine, my secants and cosecants are going to do this. So that's telling me that the domain for the x's in this function are the absolute value of x has to be greater than or equal to. So it has to be, has to be greater than 1 because equal to is going to cause me to divide by 0 here. So, um, and if it was exactly at one of those points that it was at zero, we'd have to do some other talking. So these are the, these facts on the left in red that you should know. Um, just like our other trig function, the derivative of our trig function, remember that the derivative of sine of x was cosine of x. And if I wanted the derivative of the co-function here, Derivative of cosine of x, I'm going to take the opposite of that original function there. I have kind of somewhat similar patterns. It's just going to be negatives of those things on the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some example problems just so we can see how we use these with the chain rule, product rule, and quotient rule. Okay. So um, we do have one other topic, which is derivatives of inverse functions that we're going to get into in a minute. But I want to do some examples of just these trig ones. Um, the recommended is 7 to 33 every other odd. So I'm going to do the other, every other odds. Um, so like every other odd of 7 to 33 would be like 7, 11, 15. I'm going to start working through um, the opposites there. So first what I'm going to do is 9. And it wants us to do, tells us f of w is equal to cosine of the inverse sine of 2w, okay, and wants us to evaluate the derivative of the function. 
So first thing I notice is I have a chain rule. I've got a couple of chain rules here. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to look here. I have an outside function, which is cosine of x. The derivative of the outside function is negative sine of x. I have an inside function, which is inverse sine of 2w. Now I need the derivative of the inside function. Well, here again, I have an outside function, which is the inverse sine of x. The derivative of the outside function from your cheat sheet is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. I have an inside function, which is 2w, or I could call it, I'm going to call that one 2w, and the derivative of the inside function is 2. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, I'm putting parentheses. Let me write f prime of w. Except where there's an x, I'm putting parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm putting the inside function. I do that in a different color. I'll do that one in blue. Multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Okay. Now I have the sine of the inverse sine of 2w. Well, we should remember that inverse functions perform consecutively, cancel each other out. Okay. And in most cases, that's going to be true for um, these. We just have to make sure that W has to be um, less than a half. That's going to give us a restriction in there. But these two are going to cancel each other out. That's going to leave me with negative 2W times 2, which is negative 4W. The reason why I said w has to be um, less than or equal to one half is because I know 2w has to be between negative one and one. So um, I divide both sides by two. I know that w has to be between negative one half and one half. So make sure that if we're actually doing number problems, things actually work out in those cases. Next one I'm going to do is number 13. Hide the paper up a little bit. On 13, I have f of y is equal to the inverse tangent of 2y squared minus 4. Again, this is a chain rule problem. I have an outside function of inverse tangent of x. The derivative of the outside function from your cheat sheet is 1 over 1 plus x squared. OK, I can make that a y and make that a y squared. I'm going to use keep the x's in there. My inside function is 2y squared minus 4, the derivative of the inside function with respect to y. So this is not implicit differentiation. This is going to be um, with respect to y is going to be 4y. So my final answer for f prime of y
I'll take the derivative of the outside function, except where there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put the inside function. Do I squared minus four times the derivative of the inside function? Okay. Um, Do I want to point out here, there's no reason for me to have to square this thing out because if I square this out, I'm going to get a 16 plus 1, which is a 17. And 17 does not have a 4 in it, um, does not have a factor of 4, so there would be nothing that would be able to cancel. Um, so the way I would write my final answer in this case would be 4y over 1 plus 2y squared minus 4 quantity squared. Okay. If you did want to multiply it out, so I'm going to call this a final answer. Let's look at this term that's squared. That would be 4y to the 4th minus 16y squared plus 16 plus 1 is plus 17. So another way you could have written this answer is 4y over 4y to the 4th minus 16y squared plus 17. But um, because I look at that 17, you can look at it and see, hey, that's 16 plus 1 is 17. 4 does not go into 17 evenly. So there's no reason to um, multiply it out um, because nothing is going to cancel there. Next one I'm going to do is 17 table. And it is the inverse cotangent of square root of z. Right, f of x equals inverse cotangent of the square root of... So they had f of z. I'm going to change it to f of x. Um, so again, I have a chain rule problem. Outside function is inverse cotangent of x. My derivative of my outside function is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. I have an inside function, which is the square root of x. And the derivative of the inside function is 1 over 2 square root of x. x is in the bottom. Another way that that could be written is um, x to the negative 1 half over 2. Um, remember, this is x to the negative 1 half. I mean, that's x to the 1 half. Multiply by the exponent, that gives me the one half. Subtract one from the exponent, gives me negative one half. I'm going to use that form there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the outside function. Except where there's an x, I'm putting parentheses. Get negative one over one plus something squared. I put the inside function in the parentheses. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So I have some cleanup here. Um, so I have the negative 1. This is going to end up be 1 plus x. And I have a 2 square root of x here. Um, 
what I'm going to do is just bring that two out in front. And I'm going to leave it factored 1 over 2 square root of x times 1 plus x. And that will be my final answer there. Um, I am going to do problem number 33 next, a tangent line problem. I want to check your homework really quick. Um, you're doing 38. Um, which is what I have to discuss before I can do, I have to discuss other functions before I do that. So I'm going to do 33. 33, they want the equation of a tangent line. Actually, I'm going to write line tangent to the function at a point. So I have f of x is equal to the inverse cosine of x squared. And they want me to evaluate it at the point uh, square root of 2 over 2. Comma pi thirds. I'm going to verify that. One over here. So square root of two over two, comma pi thirds. The first thing we're going to do is I have a chain rule. I'm going to do my setup here. Outside function is inverse cosine of x. My derivative of my outside function is <clears throat> negative one over square root of one minus x squared. I have an inside function, that is x squared. The derivative of the inside function is two x. So we're gonna put that together Take the derivative of the outside function is equal to negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus parentheses squared. Inside there, we're going to put the inside function. times the derivative of the inside function. So final cleanup, I get f prime of x is equal to negative 2x over the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. So that's the equation for the line tangent to this curve at any point. What we're going to end up doing is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The point, they gave me my x1, y1. Well, to get the slope, I'm going to put the x1 into this equation. So the slope at square root of 2 over 2 is equal to negative 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 to the fourth. Let's just do some cleanup on here. Um, these two can't these twos cancel and I'm left with negative square root of two on the bottom 
This is 2 to the 1 half. 1 half to the 4th would be 2 squared, which is 4. And 2 to the 4th is 16. Um, 4 sixteenths is 1 quarter. 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters. Okay, um, I'm going to write it like this. Then I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean this up. Well, down here on the bottom, that 4, I'm going to bring it up onto the top. Well, I know right there the square root of 4 is 2. So I get negative 2 root 2. So that's the negative 2 root 2 um, over the square root of 3. Well, I want to get rid of the square root of 3 on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3, and I get negative 2 root 6 all over 3. And remember that this is the slope. So my final answer to this problem is just do some copying. I get y minus pi thirds equals negative 2 square root of 6 over 3 x minus square root of 2 over 2 would be the equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point square root of 2 over 2 comma, pi thirds. So that's the inverse trig functions um, thing. But there is a thing that we could use for just inverse functions in general, and I'm going to write that down. So derivatives of inverse functions. I'm down. So if I have the inverse of a function, um, all that y zero is equal to one over the derivative of the original function with respect to x, where y sub 0 is equal to f of x sub 0. Okay. So, um, the, the derivative of an inverse function, so the derivative, that's that little tick mark there, of the inverse function. So remember, functions in their inverse. A function takes x's and gives me a y. The inverse is going to take me a y and give me an x. That's why I have this notation. It's just the reciprocal. The, the derivative of an inverse is the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function. Um, so you have homework problem number 38 that is like this. I'm going to do problem number 37 just so you can see how we're going to use this. The directions say find the derivative of the inverse at the specified point on the graph of the inverse function. I don't need to find the inverse. So here's the thing is sometimes I'm going to want to Okay, we use this to find the derivative of the inverse without actually
needing to find the inverse function. Okay. Now, the one I'm going to do, I can find the inverse function fairly easily, but there are going to be problems that I do not need to find the actual, that it's going to be impossible to find the inverse. We found some that last year in algebra that we could not find the inverse. That's where we came up with the logarithm function because we couldn't do an inverse of something to the x power. So you're doing number 38, I'm gonna do 37. So they say um, f of x is equal to 3x plus four. And this says find the derivative of the inverse of the following function at the specified point. And the point is 16 comma four. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you that the 4 is going to go there. The 16 is going to go there. So, what I need is I need the derivative of f of x. So, the derivative of f of x is just 3. Okay? So my answer is f prime of four is equal to one over three. Straight forward. Let's see, I'm looking at the rest of your homework. 62 and 64 are some more derivatives of inverse functions that you have to do, 62 and 64. Um, so I will do 63 and 65. Um, the directions, consider the following functions, find the inverse function, express it as a function of x, and then find the derivative of the inverse function. So um, directions here are find f inverse of x, then find um, the derivative of that f inverse prime. So this is the opposite of what we were doing last time. So 63, first thing I have f of x is the square root of x plus two. And um, x has to be greater than or equal to two. Um, negative two. So I need to find f inverse of x. Step one says to Change f of x to y. Swap the x and the y. Solve for y. Where minus two. And then change y to f inverse of x. Now I want to take the derivative of this. Two x. And I'm doing sixty five. It says f of x equals x to the negative one half. Where x is greater than zero. Okay. So first step, I'm gonna do steps one and two together. Um, actually I'm not, I'm gonna go y equals 
1 over the square root of x. Okay, now I'm going to swap the x and the y. Then I'm going to swap this area here so I get the square root of y equals 1 over x. That gives me y is equal to 1 over x quantity squared. which means my f inverse of x is equal to 1 over x squared. Or another way to write this is x to the negative 2. The derivative of f inverse of x multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent, and that would be my answer. Another way you may see this is negative 2 over x cubed. That's it.